Greetings, I'm NS2 Xenophon and this is Chaos. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Operation Husky historical scenario coming in OP Husky Stage 2 release. This is a variant of the scenario in which uh, you can choose exactly where you're going to land. So for instance, um, anywhere in the red air zone control map here is a place the Allies can land. So I could land in the west at Alcamo, I could land near Campo Bello, I could land near uh, Agrigento. Um, what I'm instead going to do is I'm going to land a fairly conservative landing. I'm going to land the British more or less in their historical landing beaches around Evola, headed towards Syracuse. And I'm going to land the Americans roughly between Makata and Gela. And my operational plan is to move the Americans inland towards Mazarino and Calcedrone, and move the uh, British inland towards Syracuse, up the coastal road rather, Syracuse, Augusta, Lentini, and then finally Palagonia. So my objective is to create an encirclement between Mazaroni, Mazaroni and Palagonia to trap Axis forces in southeast and Sicily and destroy them in detail. So, without further ado, let's hit the beaches. So we're going to get our beach markers placed. We're going to hit the, uh, as I said, the Americans are going to land near Lakata. Maybe a little bit over there. Place another beach near Avola. That should do. Okay, so it's going to throw the 1st Infantry Division up on the western shoulder where they're going to protect our flank um, because it's very likely that the 15th Panzer Grenadier from the west side of the island will probably collide with uh, Allied forces around Lakata. And I'm going to throw the 45th Division up towards Mazarino, landing next to, to Gela so they get up in there. We'll throw the 3rd Division up at uh, let's see, Gela's flank, hit Gela itself, I should have landed in it, but whatever this will do. And over here towards Camiso, basically we're going to land one regiment into these, these Italian coastal units uh, on the Vittoria Camiso shoulder in an attempt to just disrupt them so they can't, you know, can't move, they can't get to concentration. Let's throw an engineer regiment up just as reinforcement in there, another one in the west. There we go, throw some chemical mortars in. Get some mortars up there. Gonna land some armor uh, to support the Gela landing and another armored uh, battalion actually to clear out these heavy guns between Gela and Victoria. Uh, let's see. Gonna hold my Rangers and my Commandos in reserve. We'll get to that in a moment. Third Division's artillery. Let's see. We could land them there. Okay, yeah. Third Division's artillery will land in here. Now let's get to the British. So we're gonna run the 5th Division up the road towards Syracuse itself in some force. And we'll land, let's see, 50th Royal Tank Regiment to ensure that operation success. Hold the 50th Division in reserve for the moment. Let's land the Canadians around Pozzolo. You know, we have them secure the, the entire southeast side of the island. So the Canadians just land in there. And let's bring up the 231st Brigade, which is an independent unit. If I can, there we are. We can have them siege this airfield at Pacino, which has some mobile force in it including some uh, some R-35s for all the equipment fans out there. That's pretty obsolete by now. Let's get the Canadian 12th Tank Regiment on the ground. Let's see. 3rd County London Yeomanry lands at Evola. Let's back them up with 51st Division. So in uh, long-term plan for the British, we have the 51st Division move up towards Palazzo Acreedi. Uh, we're going to have the 3rd uh, Canadian move up to Modica and Ragusa. And we're going to have the 5th Division, supported by armor, uh, move up to Syracuse and support the port, and secure the port. So this should be a pretty conservative opening maneuver for the Allies. Uh, we're going to start to ramp up force pretty significantly as the game goes on. So let's get our air missions on the uh, get them planned. Because we currently have excellent line of sight, that's going to change the moment the turn starts running, because we, uh, we're going to have to rely on our actual recon planes instead of just beginning of game uh, invasion you know, sort of intelligence. So let's get some air support on units who are likely to be most engaged, especially those around Gela. Get it on the 1st Division, let's see. Uh, start bombing them because we have a ridiculous number of bomber missions. Allied air supremacy is uh, fairly massive in this operation as it was historically. So you can screw up and manage to obviously lose air control over some parts of the island as the allies, but you're going to have a pretty easy time in the sky over Sicily. Um, there will be a contest over these airfields later, which we'll get to at a future point in the game. But for the moment, we're just going to start bombing. Basically anything remotely mobile, going to get bombed. 
even these uh, literal FT-17s, Fiat 3000s. But big, uh, big boys here is Hermann Goering Panzer Division is in concentration for the most part. It's armor, at least, between Caltadroni and Fazzini. It's infantry's off in the north. But this is the most important stumbling block to the invading forces right now. Uh, let's see. We're going to put the last strikes. Let's hit these artillery units. And let's give some trouble to the infantry. Okay. And that should do it for turn one. So pieces are set. Let's kick this off and let's see what happens. So there we go. Hit the beaches. We're going to take the beaches basically without incident. Uh, they don't have the force to stop the invasion on the beach itself. So Syracuse Falls, Gala Falls, Lakata Falls, Ebola Falls. The invasion, yeah, invasion uh, objectives are pretty much all secured for turn one. And here we are at the top of turn two. So this is a dynamic recruitment variant of the scenario where both sides, Axis and Allies, get complete access to the uh, orders of battle uh, and they can buy units freely from it. So you're not restricted to the historical arrival dates of units and you can also uh, purchase units um, which were in reserve at the time. So for instance, Germans get access to both elements of 16th and 26th Panzer. So you can buy units which were available but were not historically deployed. There will also be a purely historical version wherein you're restricted entirely to the historical units and historical arrival dates, historical arrival locations, that will be, you know, that's that's being developed. We're currently hammering out kinks actually in the, the reinforcement system, the historical reinforcement system. But this is the dynamic version where you get uh, full access to the orders of battle. So top of turn two, uh, I'm going to bring in basically the entirety of US uh, second armor division. So let's get the second up and we're going to use them as a hammer to begin a breakthrough. And we're also going to purchase, let's see, another pair of Spitfire B squadrons and, let's see, probably yeah, an A-20 uh, G-Strike squadron, that'd be good. Um, let's also bring up the U.S. 13th Field Artillery Brigade, because we're going to need those long-range guns to support us as we get into this, this brawl around Caltadrone. So for the moment, let's see what else. I'm going to bring in the rest of the first... And for the British, you know what? Uh, I'm going to actually buy another the two U.S. Spitfire squadrons available here, and I'm going to hold the rest of the points now, with the exception of picking up the rest of the first Canadian. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to increase U.S. forces around Gela, and we're going to massively ramp up our air superiority with the objective of creating enough air control, which we really already have, but I want to make sure we can hold it to drop paratroopers. Uh, around Palagonia and behind Caltagirone in an effort to trap Axis forces as they try to retreat. So let's also, with our last few points, buy the rest of the 82nd. Again, uh, historically most of the 82nd Airborne Division was committed, but its glider forces were not, because the gliders were actually needed for British units. Uh, in dynamic recruitment scenarios such as this, that's not an issue, so we're going to bring in the entirety of the 82nd Airborne. Okay, and the requisition phase, and let's reassess situation on the ground. So on the west at Lakata, that's fairly stable. Uh, I am going to advance and take that high ground. Uh, let's see, we have 26 come up and clear that. Uh, 419th Coastal out. We're going to have the 45th expand and create a perimeter towards Mazarino because I want to, among other things, stop the axis from blowing up the, the bridge between Kanakiati and Mazarino. Now the 157th Regiment advance on Mazarino itself. Have the uh, artillery support them. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, we need to clear this hard point. So 15th and the 753rd, just advance straight through it. Have the 180 head down the road, do the same. Um, how's the shoulder doing? Okay, the artillery is ashore. That's secured. Let's hit Victoria. I just want to dislodge them from there. And let, do they have zone of control? They do. Okay, let's move down and around. We're going to move to contact near this airfield. Have the artillery support. We're going to bring out more U.S. reinforcements in a moment, but for this, for now, let's get the Canadians moving. Let's actually move up to Ragusa. I want to uh, create line continuity. Have the 234, 231st rather, storm Pacino. Have the rest of the Canadians move inland. I just want to make sure nothing's going to infiltrate by us. Head towards the beaches. Panzer Division Hermann Goring is still stationary. They will probably start, they will almost certainly start moving this turn, so they're going to be an issue shortly. 
elements of the 51st move up. Clear that MG unit, please. Come down. Fifth infantry division starts to spread out. I want them to. I actually want them to take Augusta. It's a bit of a gamble to go running straight at it right now, but um, I want that port. So let's start bringing in reinforcements. So let's bring in the elements of 50th North Umbrian. We're going to bring them in through the recently captured port at Syracuse to back up the 5th. We're going to bring in 5th Division's Machine Gun Battalion. Uh, next, we're actually bringing in the rest of 5th Division's uh, Artillery and their Divisional HQ as well. But let's bring on the Canadians. Let's get their artillery on the board. Let's get their anti-tank guns up. Uh, let's see. Let's bring up the 165th Field Regiment Royal Artillery. So we have some uh, artillery support for the Syracuse operations. Get the Canadian HQ ashore. Uh, and most importantly, let's get the... Uh, British medium and heavy artillery at core up. Okay. So hold the paratroopers this turn. We'll drop them next turn. Let's get 67th Armored Regiment on and 66th. Um, so land units consumes reinforcement points. If you've played an evasion scenario, you're quite familiar with this. Uh, I have exhausted the, effectively exhausted my reinforcement points at this point, so I'm not going to, be able, going to be able to land any more units this turn. A bit of a planning failure on my part. I should have bought more during the uh, requisition phase, but whatever it is, what it is. So I have slightly overcommitted at this point on bringing in British reinforcements, and I have undercommitted on US reinforcements, but should be fine. Uh, I'm quite confident in our, our ability to hold the perimeter and expand it with the force we have right now, especially getting that armor ashore. So we'll go with what we have. Get the air support up, actually get the air support on the boys coming out of Syracuse. Get the air recon up. Because I do not want to get surprised. And let's put some more strikes on Herman Goring, because its existence offends me. Strike uh, Grupo Tactico Garmido there. Let's hit those some of 1953s. And hit the 34 after yeah, let's hit the 34th regiment out of sheer spite. It's just generally bomb to harass. Make life miserable for the uh, Axis defenders here. What's in front of Syracuse just now, just a coastal unit? That will be overrun in literally minutes. Hit Agrigento, hit that coastal battery. Got so many bombing missions at this point, you can just basically bomb anything that you see. And we're going to kick uh, turn two over. So, looking good so far. A lot of it, how this continues going forward, though, will come down to what they do with the German armor. If they bring uh, Hermann Goring into combat, which they do appear to be, Hermann Goring's HQ just appeared outside of Palazzo. So, we're going to see uh, HG in combat. So, we're going to see what the, the Axis counterattack looks like now. And we're back in turn three. So, the Germans are moving their armor up. Uh, Panzer uh, Regiment Hermann Goring is in action near Palazzo Acrieti. My uh, apologies to our Italian players, my Italian sucks. The Tigers have reached battle, although they've actually already lost a few in combat with uh, Third County of London Yeomanry, but they killed a lot more of us. Um, so we're engaged in the east. We do have Augusta, uh, but we're engaged heavily on that road. So far, though, it looks pretty good for the British. There's fighting near Ragusa, but from the looks of it, and the, there's artillery regiment there, there's some mobile units, but nothing they can't handle with ease. Uh, Pacino did hold. In fact, Pacino actually did reasonably well. I'm going to need to deploy additional support to the 31st. They can take it, but I want to, you know, minimize their casualties. Victoria obviously fell. The point which is really frustrating, the, the Allied offensive now, is the uh, Italian units who retreated out of Gela are stubbornly fighting back. I mean, they're not inflicting a lot of casualties, but they aren't folding either. So these guys are continuing to hold down the road junction, uh, north out of Gela, which is stopping me from moving into the interior where I need to be. Meanwhile, Hermann Goring's Panzer Grenadiers are moving up on the road, as is 315th Herr Flakabteilung. So the Axis is bringing up for us to uh, slow down the breakout of Gela, and we have not moved fast enough getting out of Gela. That is a, a developing crisis I need to solve. So, um, overall, we need to affect the link up between US and British forces this turn. And we need to shore up the American position, because again, I didn't get enough U.S. forces ashore, and I need to correct that. So, we have another 200 requisition points this turn to spend. Let's start by getting a whole bunch of reinforcement points, so we can actually keep landing units. And my plan was to stage a paratroop drop this turn, but I don't think that's safe right now. Um, 
so let's see what we can bring in. So we're going to buy the rest of the 50th Northumbrian, because we can buy units without immediately deploying, obviously, and the rest of the 5th Infantry Division, because those are going to be needed on the eastern shoulder. And for U.S. forces, let's bring in the 45th Division's HQ, and 3rd Division's HQ, and at this point, I actually don't think there's much force we need to buy. We can obviously keep troops in reserve. I'm going to bring on the uh, two core supply depot and the two core HQ. And at this point, I'm going to hold the rest of the points in reserve because we've got so much force we already have. We haven't landed yet that I don't really need to to buy extra reinforcements. I'm not going to be able to use for a bit. So we'll keep those extra 116 points in reserve. We can spend them later. So let's get into the order phase. Uh, okay, so reinforcing the American position is pretty obvious. We need to get 3rd Division's HQ on the ground. We need to get 45th Division HQ on the ground. Uh, let's get 2 Core Depot up. Someone need to kill that MG company. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, rest of 2nd Armor. Okay. So we're going to battle group. Uh, I should have battled these before I landed. Well, we're going to get the Mechanized Infantry ashore. And we're going to land the 1st... Uh, the 41st Armored Infantry Regiment and the Armored Division's Artillery near Gela. We're going to land the 1st and the 41st, uh, the Recon and the 14th Field Artillery as a battle group. Over by Victoria, I want their mobility to threaten the Vizini from the south. Let's get 2nd Armored Division's HQ ashore. Uh, let's throw some more chemical mortars up. Okay, let's see. Let's see, 2nd Airborne. Let's bring on the 39th Engineer Combat Regiment as a so little filler unit around Mazarino. Uh, hold the American Heavy Artillery for this, just for now. Let's bring on the rest of the 1st Infantry Division. If we're going to be somewhat stagnant, Corps Calta Drone A, I want to uh, put more pressure on the Axis West flank so they have to devote forces to holding the 1st Infantry Division back. Okay, as for the British, let's see. Let's bring in elements of the 5th, including all of its artillery and the 13th Infantry Brigade. And let's bring on its HQ as well. And let's bring up elements of the 50th Northumbrian, specifically its artillery. So I want to start to, uh, to bring enough support assets online that the Infantry Brigades can resist an attack by Hermann Goring um, reliably. And let's bring up the 44th RTR. Let's bring them straight to Augusta, and we're actually going to try to uh, to push the axis towards Lentini and make the flank around their flank around uh, Herman Goring untenable, so they have to either respond or withdraw. Let's see who else can we bring up for this? Uh, I'm gonna bring up the first Gordon Highlanders, the 153. Also land them at Augusta. And start an AT regiment in because we may well need that. Okay, so infantry moves up. Armor moves up. Who's blocking? Oh, okay, that's that needs to be dealt with. So 69th Infantry Brigade and 50th Royal Tank Regiment will move up to contact and uh, remove those forces from the west side of the road near Augusta. Let's see what's on the hilltop here. Um, I believe that's, yeah, that's the the uh, Augusta Regia Aeronautica Battalion. We're just going to bulldoze them right out of the way. Have the 151st head down the road. Have the Cheshire Regiment uh, reinforce that effort. Okay, medium guns. Fire support, more fire support. Bring up the 111th Field Regiment, they can do yet more fire support. 152 moves inland. 154th mm, just moves up to support. I don't want to risk the actual open attack. Canadian HQ can stay sedentary for a moment. Let's march the Canadians uh, through these tactical groups in front of us. Troops at Modica move up to Ragusa, then to Camiso, affect the link up. Saskatoon MGs continue to clear out enemy holdouts, specifically the uh, coastal MGs who are retreating through us. Okay, the boys at Pacino just, you know what, we're not even going to attack Pacino, we're just going to starve them out and then clean them up after they're out of supply. It, only two more turns left there, so it's not an issue. Uh, Anti-tank of 1st Canadian is actually going to move up and join the fighting in front of Goring, because I just want to make their life harder. U.S. forces at Victoria can pretty easily, I think, knock them out of the way. Okay, now exploiting out of the Gela mess. Going to stage a proper normal attack just to try to completely overwhelm that position. Then the 180th Regiment is going to move up to contact. 
hopefully we get really lucky and we get to the road junction before the German Panzer Gun Deers do, but that's pretty unlikely, but whatever, we'll give it a shot. Let's knock these Italians off the bridge. I could care less what this MG unit does, really. Hold Nazarino, engineer soldier position. 16th Dredger moves up, causes more trouble. Let's have the artillery support them. Okay, I do have some contact on the western shoulder there. We're gonna move the 26th into position. Okay, 18th moves up, 16th is advancing. Okay, 67th Armored Regiment. Biggest hammer the Allies have in this entire operation. Gonna move up and see if we can actually snag 16 cores HQ. That would just be jolly. Uh, 30, 30th Infantry Regiment will fall on behind them. Third of the 66th. Uh, knock these guys out of the way. Playing a little risky because the armor won't be properly supported there, but I'm just gonna bank on that nothing of actual value is gonna fight them there. And the... Okay, let's actually change how we're doing this. Let's send the 66 up, and they will hit that position. We're gonna break one battalion off the 30th, and it's going to advance with the infantry onto this broken terrain. Do we have any artillery support? Yes, we do. 3rd Infantry Division Artillery supports the 30th Regiment. Actually, scratch that. Yeah, no, let's, we'll do it that way. Change into the 67th. Now let's get our air support and bombing runs done. Again, this is going to be another basically bomb everything in sight. Usually you'd be pretty worried about bombing your anti-aircraft, but we have so many air missions in Sicily because Allied Air Supremacy is just so overwhelming in this operation that I'm really not worried at all about being inefficient with use of aircraft because they are completely replaceable. So let's bomb every German Panzer in sight. In fact, let's bomb everything that remotely looks like an armored vehicle. Uh, let's come down with more coastal units I could care less. Uh, let's bomb with some of that juice. Concentration of artillery. Oh, okay, that's actually core level artillery. Yeah, we really want to bomb that. Uh, let's see what's on the west. Let's bomb the German um, recon. Bomb that Italian infantry. Get some air support on. Let's see who. Air support on the 179th. Air support on the Boys Command Majesta. Definitely air support on anything in front of Goring. And since we have four on the 66th during their, their movement. Okay, let's get those recons out. And we're going to kick uh, turn three over. There's still more force we could land, but again, I'm going to hold uh, reinforcement points for later. And let's check our air control map. Pretty good. So as we move into stage, really, the second stage of this battle, uh, after we've secured our original objectives, Palagonia, Lentini, Mazarino, etc., it's going to become a battle over these airfields because these airfields have a, uh, a plus 15% increase to friendly, in their case, access air control within six X's, and that affects stacks. And in the greater Catania region, there's about seven of those airfields. Even with a much weaker air force, we outnumber them five to one currently in air superiority. Even with a much weaker air force, the Axis can retain some level of air control or air contest in the Catania region until those airfields fall. So for the battle of, you know, was moved towards Mount Etna, it's going to become imperative that we control those airfields. So there's going to be a lot of fighting for that river line if those airfields move forward. But now we're going to kick turn three over and we're going to see what it brings us. So let's see. Okay, Hermann Goring is, there's the Tigers, they're retreating with Hermann Goring, that actually, may, okay, no, they're moving it to confront the second armor. That does make sense. Um, we'll see if we can snag them in an encirclement. That would be just jolly. And turn four is here. Let's take a look at the situation on the front before we start bringing in reinforcements. The British are doing tremendously well on the eastern shoulder. We have overrun, in fact, we destroyed in detail the Italian units which were blocking the road at Augusta for very low losses. We completely annihilated those units. Uh, let's see, overran a 90mm A battalion there. This is going fantastically. On the, the eastern shoulder in front of the British, couldn't be going better, really. Uh, British forces will probably reach the bridge south of Catania at, by the end of the turn, which puts the Axis in a significant, um, a very precarious situation, because British units are going to start streaming towards Palagonia and uh, start uh, blocking their retreat, the path of retreat for the Panzers, so they're going to have to move west towards Caltagirone. So, British doing great. Uh, fighting at Ragusa, you know, still engaged. We're reducing those units, taking some casualties. They're, they're putting up resistance, but we'll get there. Uh, American attack towards Camiso. 
uh, failed to dislodge the defenders. Uh, we have obviously uh, broken the, the roadblock near Gela, but we are significantly behind schedule there. They have, to the surprise of no one, successfully brought the 115th Panzer Grenadier up, supported by Italian tank destroyers, and they are blocking further American progress. Uh, Second Armored Division is now in contact with Hermann Goring, so I fully expect uh, some pretty major combat there. But again, at this point, the Americans' goal is to hold the Germans in place, um, and the Axis, rather, Germans and Italians in place, and the British are now going to be the maneuver element who tries to get into the rear and, and causes havoc. Uh, we failed to take the bridge west of Mazarino, and they have, in fact, reinforced it, reinforced it with a, a Legion uh, regiment, which isn't very good, but it's, you know, more bodies for the meat grinder. So, grand scheme of things, uh, making progress, but it could be a lot better on the western side. So, I'm not sure this turn we actually really need to buy much in the way of force, because we're still going through a backlog. But I'm going to live very dangerously this turn, and first of all, buy a bunch of new uh, reinforcement points. And I'm going to buy the rest of British First Airborne, and we're going to stage that paratroop drop. Is it a good idea? Maybe. But, uh, are we going to do it? Hell yes. So, let's get uh, ready to do that. I'm not going to bother with too much more in terms of reinforcements, except because the British are well ahead of schedule at this point. I'm going to bring on the rest of the British armor. And let's also bring on US 70th Tank uh, Battalion, which is a Stuart Battalion of limited use against armor, but hey, it works against infantry. So, let's get um, the British 4th, let's see, 4th Armored Brigade is really just the A Squadron, the 1st Royal Dragoons, but whatever. will battle group them with 23rd Armored Brigade, and we'll line them along with Canadian Armor at Augusta, we're just going to use them to speed up that breakout. 70th Tank Battalion is going to land at Lakata, so there's some armor support for the western side of the line. Uh, let's see, let's start the airdrop, so 1st Air Landing Brigade UK is going to land uh, on the road northeast of Mazarino. Uh, 504th Parachute Regiment will land, let's see where we're going to put them, we're going to put them in the broken terrain near Caltagirone. 25th Glider, Broken Trade near Palagonia. 85th Airborne is going to land near Calterini as well. Let's drop the Airborne Division Artillery around them. 376th Field, um, Airfield, uh, Paratroop Field Artillery Regiment, Battalion, sorry, and land with the Palagonia Group, and 456th with the 1st Air Landing. 1st uh, Parachute Brigade, let's drop them as line continuity between the Calterini and the uh, uh, drop to its west. Now, keep in mind, of course, paratroop drops are approximate. There's no guarantee those units will land exactly where we're ordered. In fact, they're unlikely to. So we're going to end up with a whole shotgun effect of units in the Axis rear, many of which will probably take pretty high casualties, but their objective at this point is just to slow down and prevent the egress of, of Axis units while the British uh, seal the encirclement. So we're going to lose a lot of paratroopers doing this most likely, but if it works, we may trap the Hermann Goring Panzer Division, and if we can destroy that, we're golden. That would be a uh, decisive uh, victory for a uh, tactical uh, victory for the allies here. So, um, paratroopers are set. Let's bring on the American artillery in force. We can bring on two regiments at Gela itself, uh, one regiment at Lakata. Uh, let's take the third regiment Gela headed east to bring on their um, field brigade artillery uh, HQ. Let's see what else we want to bring up for the British. Um, I'm going to hold the Rangers and the commandos still. Let's see, let's bring up 5th Infantry Division's um, anti-aircraft, or rather it's anti-tank because it's oversacked. I think, let's see, 50th Division, yeah, let's bring up 50th Division's assets. And that's all we're going to land for reinforcements this turn, and then we're going to get back to the maneuver. So 15th Infantry Brigade is going to advance directly west. Its only objective is simply get in contact, and the Cheshire Regiment advance behind it. Uh, first Gordon Highlanders and 44th Tank Royal Tank Regiment. Let's actually battle group them. Send them up the road to secure the river crossing. We'll send the 105th Anti Tank Regiment with them. Uh, 17th Infantry Brigade heads in behind them. Secures light continuity. 50th Royal Tank uh, Regiment is going to head straight to Caledonia. 69th Infantry Brigade will follow. Uh, we're going to put the 165th Field Regiment actually in a reserve order behind all of that just to try to keep everyone supported. 75th uh, Medium Regiment comes with fire support. Uh, let's see, this is Elements of the 5th, move up to Contact, have your artillery move up to support the 151, let's overwhelm the Italian units near Palazzo, advance towards Mazzini, have the armor do the same, 154th, now 
secure the flank there, keep the AT guns back. Uh, bring up the Canadian Reconnaissance Squadron. I'm actually going to use them. Uh, I'm going to run them north because I'm, I want their mobility for fighting more. Pacino should be out of supply this turn. Yes, it is. So we're going to hit Pacino again. Okay, we should be able to kill them relatively easily. Have the Canadians stage a uh, Impulse 1 proper attack. Have the 3rd Canadian and 12th Canadian Army Tank Regiment continue to move up. Saskatoon MGs continue to clear out uh, enemies, enemy holdouts. Uh, okay, that's Flak Red and Herman Goring. It is fortunately separated from its actual support, so let's see if we can knock out Flak Red and Herman Goring while it's vulnerable, because I do hate 88s and would love to see them dead in this case, unless I'm playing the Axis, then I love to want to see them living, but I'm not, so kill them. Um, let's see. Situation in Gela. 66. I'm going to live dangerously. I'm going to have the 66, uh, 67, sorry, armor regiment. Uh, hit Herman Goring right off the bat. I'm going to throw a bunch of artillery support on them to try to, to make sure we can at least force the Germans back. Um, so I have this little battle group of the six of the armor and infantry. Uh, oh, hmm. okay. Now that's the artillery folks. Let's let's hit the arty and let's pile the 66 regiment forward. To try to get all the way south of Jeroni. We're very unlikely to make it, but you know if we get lucky, maybe we'll we'll sever it. Uh, most importantly, I want to put pressure on the Axis as the paratroopers land. Uh, just to, to make it more likely that the land is actually succeed. Let's have this group come around. Uh, oh, these mortars are getting shot up. Okay, we're going to arrest the chemical mortars. We have this mechanized battle group come forward as well. Actually, let's hit them with a mobile attack. Mechanized battle group comes up. Second armor division HQ comes up. Uh, 39th Engineer Combat Regiment. Move them up as flank on duty because we do currently actually have a gap in uh, a gap they could exploit, which we want to close. Uh, right, these guys. Okay, we're gonna take another stab at the bridge. Knock that battery out. Okay, actually, what we're gonna do with uh, Mazarino is we're gonna split the 157th Infantry Regiment into two battle groups. Gonna take the third and the heavy weapons uh, company, and they're going to clear that artillery unit out and move a little westward. And the 157 itself is going to hold its current position in case of Axis counterattack. Um, we're going to have the first infantry division expand its uh, perimeter. Let's see, we're hitting them on two, so we'll hit them on three. First infantry division continues to expand its perimeter, so we're going to continue to move out into the west. We might even try to go as far as Agrigento that's living a bit dangerously in case of uh, major Axis counterattack, but at this point I'm going to gamble on the fact that I don't think the Axis can mount a credible counterattack on the western shoulder, because uh, I think so much of their mobile force is now involved in the fighting in the east. They don't realistically have what they would need to uh, to put real pressure on us in the west. So we're going to live a little dangerously, we're going to get the first infantry division uh, up and ex expand their perimeter again. Um, let's see what else we can do. We're going to bring on British 13 Corps because we may need the supply. Let's take a look at the supply map currently. We're fine for the moment, but uh, you never know when you're going to need a mobile depot. And I think that's going to be it for this turn. Uh, we're otherwise in a pretty good position. We're going to uh, break up one of the artillery units here, use it to spread the level around. Uh, spread, spread that battle group. Um, obviously, a situation at Gala does worry me, but. At this point, we're just going to have to live with it. So let's get the air support in. And then we'll kick this right over. Huh, Brissaglieri coming up. Territorial Brissaglieris, but still good troops. Okay. Good strike mission on the artillery. Might as well bomb the guys on the bridge and let them dead. Bomb the Tigers for the high sin of existence. Goring. Get the usual recon up. Support for all who need it. Actually, I need to task more aircraft, aircraft on air support and running a bit low there. Okay, so before we kick it over, we're going to go to Air Command. Uh, Air assets are doing pretty well overall. Going to rest some of the Spitfires just so I can bring them up to full strength again. Uh, rest one of the Kitty Hawk squadrons. 
So let's rest two Kidiac Squadrons and let's bring the uh, Warhawks up for close air support. And that should be good to go. So we're gonna we're gonna see what happens. I guess what do we have? So we're advancing, combat, no major breakthroughs yet. They are holding us on the eastern shoulder, so we may actually not reach the uh, the bridge near Catania. So we're gonna not get that that big breakout we're hoping for, but we'll keep uh, grinding them down, keep uh, destroying their reserves, and hopefully with paratroop drop we can trap Herman Goring, because if we can trap them, the Axis honestly doesn't have a whole lot immediately available that can stop us without bringing up Panzer reserves out of Italy. So we'll uh, see what the turn brings us. As usual, we'll get to our reinforcements here in a moment. Let's uh, take a look at the actual combat situation now. So, uh, we've achieved the link up, basically. Uh, at the Camiso, we need to actually like move into the hex and finish the link up, but it's pretty close. So, U.S. and British forces have also linked up. Herman Goring, to the surprise of absolutely no one, uh, successfully held the uh, um, American armor back. We did overrun a, uh, a battle group, including some FT-17s from the Italians, but I don't think anyone cares. Um, so second armor division is currently stuck in contact. It's really not going to break out. It's not going to break out through Herman Goring, so we're going to have to hook north, but thankfully we should be able to do that. Um, where did the Panzer Grenadiers go? Not sure where the Panzer Grenadier Regiment, unless it was a 115th, in which case they brought them into the encirclement. Congratulations, sometimes the AI plays itself. Um, so the situation in front of Yell is a lot weaker. We can push that pretty easily. Uh, they did reinforce, in fact, there was a lot of high-intensity combat over here. They reinforced the bridge uh, near Gela, and we ground through a lot of, like, machine gun units and 88s and the like, but we did not, we did not break through. So, oh yeah, they brought up uh, Battalion Reggio. So, they're bringing forces down to secure the, the bridgehead. In fact, there's also Italian commandos engaged now, so we're not going to get the bridge at Catania without a significant fight. So, we're going to have to move over to an attrition strategy there. Uh, paratroopers are on the ground. Uh, in fact, on the ground, some some numbers. Let's see what's going on up here. Yeah, they're trying to break through the paratroopers who landed near Mazarino. Uh, obviously, paratroopers actually threaten their supply depot at Grand Michel. It's a 16 cores depot, so that's good. Um, paratroop drops done perfectly fine. It's a matter now of actually breaking through to them and uh, getting the reinforcements they need. Um, elements of the 15th Panzer here on the west. But otherwise, looking pretty good. Not a whole lot has changed, really. Um, it's going to really have to see this turn how much we can push. Uh, we gave Pacino another another good uh, shove. It's pretty close to falling. We took some casualties, but killed a lot more of them. So let's see what we're going to bring on for reinforcements. Let's bring on the entire U.S. 9th Infantry Division. And we're actually going probably going to deploy them on the west side. Uh, and we're going to bring out the Moroccan Tabors. See, what do we want to bring up for the British? Um, let's bring up the rest of 51st Highland. And I think we're going to hold hold 78th and 46th back for the moment. We'll hold the Army Group Royal Artillery back. Uh, is there any armor left? Okay, reconnaissance. Um, for the moment, we're going to hold points. Uh, one option we do have is actually to purchase additional landings, additional naval invasions. I probably won't do it in this scenario, but that is one strategy which is viable to, do, to stage follow-up landings. Um, but let's end reinforcement and let's move back to orders so as usual we're going to start from the east so situation on the eastern shoulder um I mean, we're still very strong here but they're putting a lot of stuff in our face so we're going to move the first canadian uh, army tank uh, brigade up and we're going to push that position again by the lake we're just going to try to push the Mosa lake towards the river while other forces particularly this battle group um secure the west side of of the, the lake near Palagonia. Continue to push them forward. These 25 pounders are getting torn up. Okay, so at Vizzini, we do have the Tiger Company. They've taken some fairly significant loss at this point, probably a lot of that to bombing. Uh, Herman Goring's HQ is alone there, so let's push them with the 154th Brigade. 152 moves up the road, ensures line continuity. Uh, 151 and the 3rd County of London Yeomanry will head straight for Grand Michel. They're going to try to tap that depot, as will 325th Glider. Actually, 325th Glider is going to retreat into the hills, just get that defensive position. Uh, 82nd Airborne's in a great spot. So the uh, 504th is going to move into the hills. The 1st Parachute Brigade is going to look more, a little more dangerously. It's going to head for the airfield near uh, Palagonia. 
Uh, first, our landing brigade is going to hold this position. And the 157 will come up to relieve them. This battle group is going to come up and take that high ground. Uh, okay, we secured this side of the bridge near Kanakiati, so we're going to head across it now. Get some artillery and fire support just to uh, increase our odds. Move this artillery up to support the boys near Mazzarino. Um, let's hit these guys in a full attack. Put them in reserve. Okay, so uh, we'll deal with the mess near Herman Goring here in a moment. Let's quickly get the first infantry division moving up. So we're just going to continue the first ID's advance. There's really nothing here to stop them. I mean, yes, the elements of the 26th division are coming up. But a single um, Italian infantry division supported by some Kosa elements isn't going to stop with more or less a veteran U.S. rifle division, which is not going to happen. So we should be uh, fine there, have the HQ clear out the stragglers. Uh, 70th Tank Battalion is going to move up into reserve. 77th Field Artillery moves up to Katakiati, which we are going to attack in a proper attack this turn. Let's hit the guys to the west as well. Continue to clear out this artillery brigade, which is literally four guns left. They're they're uh, they're stuck. They will be dead shortly. Uh, have third infantry division kill that machine gun unit. It's still in the rear. Okay, yeah. Now for the thing I've been avoiding, figuring out how to deal with Herman Goring. So we are grinding Herman Goring down just through persistent combat. Uh, what did we kill here? I'm clicking through the menus. Uh, okay. Oh, right. Yeah. Herman Goring Flak. Okay. So Herman Goring Flak Regiment is dead. That's actually a pretty major success. Um, so we're going to turn the Canadians northwards towards Herman Goring. Have Saskatoon clear out the coastals. 7th Infantry Regiment comes up to secure the link up. Um, we failed to overrun them. Okay. We killed some, but we didn't overrun them. So we'll do that again. Have the Canadians finish clearing them out. Get the Chino again this turn. Bring the artillery up in support. Have uh, Canadian Division's HQ move up. Um, okay, now here's where we just get bloody handed. We're just gonna straight up attack Herman Goring's assets. Uh, at this point, we're just trying to inflict casualties. We're relying on the fact that Allied armor is far more replaceable than German armor. So we're just going to inflict casualties and uh, grind them down through attrition. Most importantly, I want to keep them engaged, so it's hard for Herman Goring to uh, disengage and try to run, make a breakout through the paratroopers, because they would get through the paras. There's no question about that at this point. Uh, usually I'd worry about having my artillery on the front line. This is, those are SP guns, they're M7 priests, and the things in front of them are towed artillery, so I'm really not worried. Get those chemical mortars back into action. Get all the air support we can on uh, guys in front of Herman Goring. Get some air support on the British units advancing north and northeast. Get air recon up around the river line because I don't know what we're walking into. And all the usual terror from the sky. Uh, speaking of bombing, um, so there's going to be an intermediate update which releases before before OP Husky Stage 2 comes out. It's going to be an intermediate update, which among other things is going to release the Battle of Tobruk, historical Battle of Tobruk, which I'm sure is going to be a lot of fun. That's currently in beta testing. Um, should be some gameplay footage of that coming out in the coming weeks. Um, but it's also going to include a complete rework of the bombing system uh, in terms of the efficiency. So bombing in general is going to be fairly similar, but air strikes and air support in Chaos current live build are significantly overtuned. So you're going to be seeing air support numbers coming down by as much as 50 to 60 percent in some years. It's based on on year brackets. So there's going to be a dev blog coming out pretty soon detailing those changes. Uh, air support is going to be air well, air in general is going to be significantly weaker than it is in current live chaos um, because we found as we started actually testing historical scenarios like like Operation Husky um, that the air system was simply overtuned. So we're going to be dealing with that. And that should, uh, should have some pretty major knock-on effects in gameplay. So, for instance, in current live build, I'm currently playing on beta, but in the current live build, uh, an airstrike basically always pins a unit, just almost without exception. That will no longer be true. There will be a much higher chance for air missions to miss their targets completely or to not do enough damage to pin them. So uh, that's going to have some pretty significant effects. Uh, also, a bunch of uh, aircraft which previously did not have air support missions, such as the FW-190A8s, will be getting those, as they historically did have bomb racks. Uh, so there'll be some, some pretty major changes coming up for the air balance, uh, which we'll go into in considerable depth 
you know, the appropriate dev blog. Apparently I missed several British units over here uh, when I was, was moving uh, on the eastern shoulder, so I'm gonna get them going before we kick the turnover. Fifth Division's HQ should move up to come, should move up to support its units. 50th Division is the same. Uh, AT of the Canadians, yeah, moving up to the Zini. Okay, I think we're good to go. Um, before we kick it over, I am going to land the 9th Infantry Division. And I'm going to use them to exploit behind uh, the breakthrough, which First Infantry Division has has accomplished. So what we'll have the ninth do is they're going to come up to Kaltan Seppa and uh, head into the interior of the island. But we'll get more into the details for them in the next turn. At this point, I think there's so much British force, I don't really need to bring on much of the way of reinforcement right now. So we're going to kick turn five over, and we're going to see what we get. Okay, so let's see. Engage in east, we're not breaking through. We are breaking through in the center of Caltadrone. We've taken their supply depots. They've tried to bring it back. British troops have secured Vizzini. Herman Goring is retreating into them. This is looking good. It looks like we're going to trap Herman Goring, or at least we have a good chance, a good shot at it. So let's see what uh, what we get. Um, pretty hopeful about this. I'm pretty sure that by turn 10, we will be, we'll have the airfields near Catania. I guess we'll actually make that the objective. So the plan was to, to play 10 turns of this of this scenario for uh, you know, for recording. And uh, we'll see if we can get to Catania by turn 10. We'll make that the challenge. Okay, so here we are in turn 6. Turn 6 is the first turn of the game where the Allies actually do not have a, uh, a requisition phase. Um, the, the, the requisition phases follow the historical uh, track of, of Allied reinforcement. But first turn we don't have a requisition phase, but then again I hardly think we need it. So let's take a look at the situation on the front. We'll start from the west. Uh, the Axis has brought up uh, fairly significant elements of the 15th Panzer Grenadier to stop the breakout of 1st Infantry Division. This is a logical counterplay. Um, so they, they're they going to pretty much stop our progress towards Agrigento. So we'll bring up the 9th and we'll see if we can break through Kanakiati. But there is a German Panzer Battalion in there. So they've taken the steps they need to to stop a major breakout from the west. So let's take a look at the situation near Calta Girone. Uh, honestly, the situation looks really good. Uh, let's see, what did we overrun here? Uh, a whole bunch of things. Uh, we overran a, or did significant damage to, I should say, uh, Italian mobile group, several Italian artillery regiments, and uh, some damage to 1st Panzer Grenadier Regiment Herman Goring itself, so for no actual losses, that was a, a major success. So Herman Goring is very close to encircled at this point. If you take a look at the zone of control map, their only path of egress at this point would be to head northwest straight to Calta Gironi and then through the 82nd Airborne Division's HQ, which they certainly could accomplish, but they'd have to get there before 2nd Armor chases them down. So. Uh, Herman Goring is probably screwed. I'm sure he'll be very angry. Um, he'll be raging in his nice white uniform. Uh, the guys at Pacino continue to, quote, hold out, but at this point we're just cleaning them up. They're not actually inflicting casualties. Um, let's see. Situation south of Catania. We're advancing, but it's a lot slower than I'd like. We are inflicting, you know, significant casualties. We wiped out a whole bunch of things there, actually, but... Um, they're slowing us down with their bodies, just trading men for time at this point. Um, Fourth Infantry Division Italian is heading into combat north of Caltagirone. They're going to try to use them to hammer through the paratroopers. Keep in mind, at this point, the paratroopers are significantly under strength because of cohesion losses from the paratroop drop, so that's it's not a bad um, idea on their part. Uh, they're effectively completely destitute. They have nothing south of Caltana Sata, but I'm also not in a great position to exploit that. So let's uh, let's manage a situation as usual starting in the east. So we want to break through to the river. Um, going to become increasingly difficult as so now Falschmjäger MGs and uh, Sturmgeschütz of the 129th Panzer Battalion are engaged. So that's at a whole bunch of anti-aircraft guns. Uh, realistically, probably not going to happen down the road, so we're going to have to go around it. So let's have this battle group actually transverse westwards. Uh, what's in here? Uh, a bunch of artillery. Sadly, they do have a zone of control, so they need to die. We'll have the 15th Brigade clear them out. Hell, we'll even throw in the U.S. Uh, um, U.S. paratroop field artillery to support there. Uh, rest in peace, 165th Field Regiment. You've been beat to shit. So let's bring the this battle group up into contact near Patagonia. 
Okay, I'm going to put the antique guns on the road to Lentini, and I'm, do I have an infantry regiment to support them with? Okay, and I will support them with the MGs of the 2nd Cheshire, and we'll break out the uh, Royal Engineers of uh, 5th Division, actually, and we will group them with the MGs of Cheshire, and um, head them up the road to Lentini, supported by the AT guns, they'll hold the road. Let's disengage the Canadian 1st uh, Army Tank Brigade, and we're going to get them up into battle on the west side of the, the airfield zone. 69th Infantry Brigade can hold this current position. Um, A Squadron, British Re or Canadian Recon, comes up as well. Uh, we'll get to the artillery orders in a moment. Bring up these guns. Uh, support operations against uh, Pelagonia. Okay. Herman Goring's HQ is engaged. Let's give them a nice hit. And okay, Canadians have finished cleaning up the stragglers in the south, so Canadians are going to head northwards, bring their armor with them. They're going to secure the south end of the encirclement against Herman Goring. Uh, bring up the American... Uh, oh, the Herman Goring's recon won't kill them, so we'll bring up the 7th Regiment as well. Uh, this battle group of 2nd Armored Division is going to move into combat. Okay, yeah, this force in front of us here isn't really that... Uh, strong, so we're going to have 30 overrun that mobile group, have the armor, yeah, and 600 armor red is going to go into combat and grab a shell. Have the priests actually engage in direct combat here, 66 joins them. This battle group has the Celta Girone. Field artillery supporting. Okay, get them there, ready. Move the chemical mortars up towards Galtagroni as well. 753rd Tank Battalion is actually getting pretty depleted. It uh, hasn't taken much, in fact, it's hardly taken any losses at all, but it's lost about 30% of its cohesion. So we're going to move them up to contact, but not in, to engage. We'll move the 15th Regiment to support them. 180th Regiment is going to move forward to relieve the paratroopers. Uh, okay. Situation in the center here. Pull the 456 paratroop field artillery out. Move the 157th in. This battle group secures the high ground. Uh, move up to put Kanakiati in a encirclement, or sorry, an element. We can't encircle it yet. And elements of the night are going to move up as well. Same axis in advance. And next turn, we're going to try to, to sever the road connection between Caltana Seta and Kanakiati. So then, two turns, we can hopefully take the town itself. Um, let's see. Move them back. Move them forward. Semi tank uh, battalion remains in reserve. 40th Engineer Commer Regiment's getting shot up. Going to pull them back. And now for all the usual bombing on everything. If everything is gray, make it dead. Get the recon in here. Okay, air support. Uh, let's look at the situation in front of Goring. So, I don't yet have the power to push them, not really. I mean, I could, but it would be expensive. So, let's continue to move around their flank. Air support for the units are going to be involved in that. Air support for the units. Uh, so, I actually put some air support on the HQ and the 82nd just in case they do try to make a breakout. Um, put the strike missions in. Head to Air Command, let's take those Kitty Hawks off maintenance, put them on air support, let's put the, the American Warhawks on maintenance. Spits come out, let them go down on maintenance, just want to keep force rotating. Uh, let's see what else. Lightning Recons are getting run down with the Boston Bomber, the Boston 3 Bombers, uh, rest of it. And that should be good for now, there's certainly more we could micromanage. Move them in. Finish over running Pacino, then rejoin the battle. Elements of the 50th Division, you could definitely come up to contact here. We've got more force than I can realistically hope to employ at this point, just because the, uh, the front is fairly small in the grand scheme of things, actually. Get the long range guns working. Okay, yeah, I think we're good to go, so let's kick this through. See, Herman Goring's remaining trapped, that's good. Uh, we're making progress towards Palagonia. Looks like we may, maybe, seal that 
that deal this turn. We'll get very close anyway. They're putting a lot more force in Count Kiati. So they're going to hold us in the west, but we are making progress in the east. Uh, the question just is, can we actually reach Catania in three turns? That's that's going to be difficult, but you know we'll give it a try. Okay, continuing on turn seven. Again, this is another turn without uh, without allied requisition. Um, situation overall looks pretty good, although I think our dreams of draining Catania are um, completely dashed. The strong elements of the 29th Panzergrand Deer are now engaged there, and it will take days to reduce them. Uh, so we're not going to get Catania, so we're going to see how much, how many of the airfields we can snag. Um, but yeah, still engaged in the east. We did almost break through Pelagonia. We should be able to, to finish that up shortly. Herman Goring is trapped. There's, there is no escape for them at this point. Um, we're going to, we will destroy them in detail. Although there's, like, an entire core of force. There's literally one, let's see, 50th Division's engaged there. Most of the 1st Canadians engaged. Most second armies. There's basically three and a half divisions surrounding Herman Goring now. Um, they're a strong unit, but they're not going to withstand all of that. Uh, Kanakiati, they have secured pretty well. They have German armor recon on the northern shoulder. Uh, they're bringing up Brasaglieri to back them up. They've got German Panzer Grenadiers and armor near the town itself. So Kanakiati probably won't fall. Agrigento, they're building up more artillery there. It's a core level gun section now, uh, gun group. Um, so the center of the line towards Emma, though, is still quite weak. So we're going to try to push the push the center shoulder towards Emma uh, to break the ground line, if you, or not break, but to significantly inhibit the ground line of communication between the axis east and west shoulder. If we seize Enna, then their units moving east to west and supply has to go up through Nicosia, then down this road, then cross country, then link up, then go down the road to Lakara Fridi. That would be um, a logistical nightmare. So seizing Enna at this point is pretty important. So let's, uh, let's as usual, actually, right now we're not going to start in the eastern front, east front flank. We're going to start uh, near Mazarino and think about how we're going to achieve the Anna breakthrough. So the force in front of us is mostly garbage. It's like militia units um, with a limited amount of mobile units in front of us. But again, they're on R35s, so who cares? So let's have the 753rd and 15th move up. They're going to secure the road junction. The 157th Regiment will move up to Enna itself, as will the uh, British 1st Air Landing. We'll put in skirmish because, as a specialist unit, um, they get a fairly nice uh, skirmish modifier, 15% as gliders, as glider troops. Um, it's battle group of the, I believe that was battle group of the 157, yeah it is. Uh, knocks out 208th Coastal Division Headquarters and tries to seize the bridge at Kaltana Seta. Uh, in order to make it easier to move the, uh, the knight forward, we're going to try to dislodge the German armor recon on the north uh, east shoulder of Kanakadi, while 9th Infantry Division's other assets move uh, bypass the position. You guys keep going. Uh, they did stage a counterattack uh, south out of, the, out of the town, but we killed more of them than we lost, so doing fine there. 40th Engineer Regiment rests. 70th Tank Battalion goes into reserve. Um, let's quickly knock these guys out. Artillery fire support on that enterprise. Uh, okay, let's see. So let's finish cleaning up Goring. Um, at this point, we can pretty much just rush them. They, there's, we have so much force here that they can't, you know, we're coming from so many directions, they realistically can't stop us. So kill the HQ. Bring the infantry up. Uh, knock the one, two, one fifteen Panzer Grenadier out. Um, six seventh armor, yeah, move straight up. Going to have this battle group and these chemical mortars actually bypass, head towards Pelagonia. Artillery fire supports, 30th Infantry Regiment uh, rests because their cohesion is shot. Um, okay, recon battle group engages with fire support. Seventh Regiment comes up to clean up if needed. Flak Regiment, we would care less about at this point because they don't have Snowball's chance in hell of actually bombing us. Get some more fire support up. Let's bring the 50th, 50th Infantry Division's guns up, although they'll hardly be needed at this point. Okay, and continue pushing on Pelagonia. There, get the armor up. First Canadian Army Tank Brigade. See if we can actually get them across the river. Uh, move First Parachute Brigade up to contact. 504th moves up to contact. 
They're going to be supported by the 66th Armored Regiment, as well as Armored Division Artillery and Fire Support. I'm going to bring the anti-aircraft guns of uh, anti-aircraft and AA guns, rather, uh, and AT guns, rather, uh, up to support the British Guard Troopers. Uh, 456 needs to rest, 160th comes up to contact. Fire Support's 39th Engineer uh, Regiment is going to join the drive towards Enna. The 180th is going to off-road um, to the west side of the river basin there to provide a, a shoulder. 45th Division's HQ moves up to that hilltop. 35th Division's HQ moves up to Calpa Girone. 41st Armored Infantry is going to join the drive on Calpana Seta. Actually, let's have them... Uh, how do you want to do this? Let's go into there. They want to be on the west shoulder of the operation. Uh, 45th Division's artillery supports that operation. Uh, let's see. More fire support there. Get some air support in there. Air support, obviously, anyone running down the road. Yeah, we're not moving this. That's too much force in the east, so we're just going to continue to hold. Hold. We're going to fall 50th Royal Tank Regiment back in reserve. We're going to move the 105th Anti-Tank Regiment up. Actually, 105th can move on to the road. Uh, and then the 52nd will move up to support the 69th. 75th uh, Medium Regiment to provide fire support. Okay, otherwise, let's bring up these medium guns to keep supporting the uh, armored battle groups as they advance. Move the MGs up in support. Bring these AA and AT guns up. Uh, in fact, let's just pile the 102nd AT up at Lentini in reserve, because I want to, at that point, we're going to have something like 156 pounders uh, in or around the Lentini area, so uh, Sturmgeschütz attack shouldn't really be that much of a concern. Uh, 234's finished cleaning up uh, Pacino. Good job. Bring them up. Bomb. Everything is gray, as usual. Novel. Behavior, bomb stern reshoots, uh, bomb Kanakiati, and let's bomb that armored recon. Let's hit this mobile unit, hit the Panzer Grenadiers, hit the armored artillery, which is grouping up in Agrigento. Uh, we only have two recon missions this turn, so next turn we're going to be a bit blind in the sky. Um, let's bring the Warhawks out of maintenance, bring the Boston's out of maintenance, put a Mitch Mitchell in maintenance. Spitfires come up, shuffle some more back and forth, uh, put the A36 Apaches, one of them on mate, one squadron on maintenance, uh, okay, bring that squadron of F5s back up, and the other one goes back to maintenance, so, okay, we are good to go there. One last air support mission, which we will, I guess, give to the 67th, and uh, we should be able to achieve the near destruction, near total destruction of Axis forces in the pocket, probably within two turns. Uh, let's bring up these 155 long guns. These are uh, 155 M1A1s, so they're the big 4 hex range cannons. And we'll use them to support the, the operations up the road. Bring up the shorter range howitzers for use next turn. Bring up 2 core depot. It's going to be desperately needed here in a moment. And I think we're good to go, so let's uh, see what happens. So engaged across the front, uh, making significant gains against Herman Goring. Okay, doing pretty well so far. Nothing's nothing's going terribly wrong. So let's see what uh, turn eight brings us. Okay, we're here in turn eight. Uh, this is another Allied requisition turn, so we could bring on more force if we we're so inclined. Um, we can take a look at the combat situation before I decide whether to do that or not. Uh, let's take a look at the air map. Uh, air control is excellent at this point. Um, still, obviously, lingering Axis air control in the north and contested air zones in several places. But um, overall, looks good. Uh, so what we could actually do... I didn't recon Catania this turn, did I? If we recon Catania, actually an option would have the Ranger landing there, uh, just south of it, in, in an attempt to put a, uh, the Axis forces in his own control lock. But we don't have good recon there, so we're not going to do it. So situation with Herman Goring is you know, they're disintegrating. They, are, they will most likely fold completely uh, next turn. That'll free up a whole bunch of allied forces to head north. Uh, situation on the Anna Road, again, our recon isn't fantastic here, but as far as we can tell, 
uh, appear to be making good progress. They did counterattack pretty substantially, actually, against um, the 504 if they did force it back. Uh, so we're going to have to, to uh, fight to regain that territory. Shouldn't be too hard, though. Uh, Palagonia link-up is complete. Uh, we do now have Kankiadi in a full encirclement. So let's, uh, let's start this turn off from the west. So we're going to head up to, Ag to contact in Agrigento. I don't think we're going to actually have a force to take it, so we won't try. So we'll uh, dislodge the unit on its flank. Have the artillery fire support that. Bring up the 40th Engineer Combat Regiment again. Uh, sure the H2 come up as well. And we're actually going to try to, uh, to crush Kan Kiyadi this turn because we now have it encircled. Their only lines of retreat are zone of control lock. So we're going to hit them with a big attack by impulse. What, yeah, four. So big impulse four attack. If they can join it. And we're going to have the 39th Infantry Regiment continue towards Keltana Seta, where they will hopefully link up this battle group with the 157. 157 itself will head up to Anna. First Air Landing Brigade will try to, to cut that ground line of communication. Uh, First Armored Infantry will come up to support the Anna operation. Um, what's that there? Never mind, it's just a brigade headquarters. Um, so let's stage an impulse four attack down the slope. Move the engineers up, try to bypass. 15th. Uh, regiment does the same thing. 17th field artillery supports the attack. 36th field artillery um, supports the operation against Enna. Just generally advance the artillery to support uh, support advancing fighting units. Second armor moves east. Might as well deploy this uh, Italian depot we captured. Uh, let's see what else. 45th uh, division artillery supports the 39th advance. Bombs for everyone. Humanitarian aid drop the bombs. Hit the 29th. Okay, so how are we doing in the Herman Goring zone? So let's continue to dismantle their remaining positions. Gonna do most of this with march attacks just because we want to hit them as many times as we can to to try to roll retreat. Because every time they roll a retreat and they can't they can't find a place to retreat to, they take an automatic 15% casualty. So uh, it's a pretty good way to eliminate these powerful units. Okay, Canadians, get in there and clear them out. Okay, before we finish up the Herman Goring sector, let's quickly take a look at the north here. So we're uh, engaged on the river. What's in front of us there? 33rd. Uh, so that's, that's a fully formed Italian uh, rifle regiment. Um, decently trained as well. It's, it's Livorno Division. They're not bad. Um, but they don't really have anti-tank capabilities. Um, problem is we don't have infantry there. The infantry's lagging behind. So we're going to make a what would admittedly be a very risky attack if this was against like, um, supporting enemy units. But Italian infantry without any tank capability isn't too dangerous, so we're going to make an unsupported armed attack there. We're going to move the um, machine gunners up. To support. Uh, this battle group comes up to clean up any stragglers. This uh, AAAT unit comes up, knock those guys off the road, fire support from the paratroopers, artillery. This battle group moves up to contact as well, chemical mortars supporting. Okay, paratroop fuel artillery supporting there. Uh, let's get these medium guns up and supporting the attack across the river. Actually, we need to do that. Um, okay, they're still resting. Contact across the front here, but fairly irrelevant. Just really skirmishing. Okay. I'm actually going to shuffle this element of the 5th Infantry Division up to the fighting in the north. The guys of the 50th continue down. They're actually going to uh, head into the fighting on the west side. At this point, we're going to take anything which isn't immediately engaged with Hermann Goring. We're going to send it to the west side of the river fighting here. Canadians and 
join the battle again. We probably won't destroy the Panzer Regiment Herman Goring this turn. We should get it next turn. We're going to devote all of our forces in the area to killing literally everything else. Saskatoon MGs can move up to different parts of battle. Infantry Division Artillery moves up. Other supply situation looks good. Uh, we're still relatively close to ports, so it's really not surprising. Okay, let's get uh, get air support set up. Definitely want air support for fighting Kanakiati. Uh, air support for the guys holding the shoulder. Let's get some better recon on Tanya this turn. Focus all of our recon efforts on eastern uh, eastern and central fronts. Get some strikes in. Don't want to strike that too much AA. Strike for everybody Panzer out of sheer spite. Okay, and I think we're set. There's certainly a lot more force I could bring in, but again, at this point, I hardly feel like I need it. Uh, one thing I will do actually is I'll bring in the rest of my infantry division. Okay, and we. Oh, I never dropped a 505th. Oh, okay. That gives us options. So, 505th then is going to drop at Leontaforte, and the third of the 504th drop at Nicosia and see if we can create um, disruption there. So, they hit the ground, they actually took their objectives pretty much immediately. Uh, we did not take Kankiati, but we are firmly across the river in the east. In fact, we may get to level them out of the river line here. So, overall, looks like it's going good. We'll see what, uh, see what the situation looks like at the top of the next turn. Okay, heading into turn 9. So, uh, the situation continues to look favorable for the Allies. We're cleaning up the last survivors of Hermann Goring. What's left here is shot, so shot up it really can't fight back. Uh, so that's that continues to go well. Ken Kiyoti will fall this turn. There's all that's left now is uh, the remains of a single Panzer Battalion, which are low cohesion with no support. So that's going to be a pretty major, pretty major uh, you know gain there. Every German tank killed here counts. So Ken Kiyoti will fall. The armor in it will be destroyed. We're engaged at Agrigento, which we actually came very close to overrunning to, to the surprise of literally everyone. Although there's a Panzer Grenadier Regiment heading there now, so that may change. Um, situation in Central Front looks fantastic, honestly. Uh, paratroopers hit the ground, they've cut the Axis ground lines of communication basically throughout the entire center of the island. Um, without clearing those paratroopers out, the Axis would now have to actually use the northern coastal roads, so that's looking good as long as we can break through and uh, keep those paratroopers supported. So let's uh, start this turn with the situation in Enna and think about how to, to break through to Liana Forte. So, First thing you want to do is you want to keep these um, these Italian infantry who are advancing in mass in the Anna region. You want to keep them off the road. So uh, let's head the 15th up, and they're gonna head straight for Anna. Uh, they did stop us from getting into Anna itself. Uh, they managed to get uh, fifth fifth uh, rifle regiment of uh, 28th division on the road there. So we need to devote more assets to the Anna operation. Um, let's see what's here at Coltanzetta. Uh, Heavy artillery unit, we can overrun that easily. So, kill the artillery, move. We're going to divide the 39th into two elements. The main regiment will advance on Santa Catarina, and a single, the third of the 39th will advance westward and just stop uh, Axis forces from, from um, trying to reach the bridge from the west. So, in the meantime, uh, overrun Kankiati, we can do that with the forces already there, which frees up the 47th regiment to come join the fighting at Santa Catarina. Frees up the 77th, uh, which is a heavy howitzer uh, regiment to come northwards. Um, let's see. Fighting Agrigento. At this point, we're just fighting Agrigento for the sake of keeping their forces fixed in place. Um, Agrigento isn't that important in my, my grand scheme of things right now. Uh, so get those fire support missions sorted. And, in fact, let's be extra spicy and we'll have an impulse four attack across up the slope with the 18th regiment just counting on that the Italian reserve units there probably can't hold us back. 60th regiment will come up and bypass as well. 45th division HQ moves up. Um, 
Okay, and a situation. It really means we need more force on the Anna front, which we thankfully can now have because we should have those those British units who are freed up from the fight of Herman Goring. So see about dislodging these guys. Okay, we overran some units there earlier. Uh, let's give them a good solid hit on impulse one. Supporting the artillery. Um, gonna have the first parachute brigade move up. First Army and Canadian Army Tank Brigade moves up. Cheshire uh, Battalion supports them. Uh, this battle group moves up to create line continuity. Okay, this, let's combine these guys. Uh, let's have this battle group, which is now a battle group of chemical mortars, uh, US infantry, and US armor, is going to move uh, westwards, where they're going to try to, to threaten the east side of the, the NS situation. Um, let's see. As long as 115 is still on this road, we have a hard time levering the force we need out of there. So kill them, redeploy the armor to the Anna fighting. Uh, 753rd comes down, and it's going to help press that position on the shoulder. The 180th comes up, does the same thing, it's going to support the whole operation with 70th field artillery. 36th field artillery, who are the big guns, are going to support the attack towards Anna. We're going to bring this paratroop field artillery out and do the same thing. Give them lots of air support. And try to force this the forces on the on the bridgehead just closer to Catania. Uh, let's bring up this artillery. Have the medium guns support that operation as well. Have these 25 pounders move up into a central position. It's freed up infantry brigades and get up to combat. More 25 pounders who are free. Um, AT guns go back to reserve. Armor in reserve. Battle group of the engineers moves into combat. 25 pounders provide fire support. In fact, move these, these 40 millimeter AA guns into the line. Uh, let's see what else we have. 231st Brigade is at Syracuse. Really needs the rest, though. Um, continue to clean up the remainder of Herman Goring. Yeah, kill them off. Okay, freeze up the 30th Infantry Regiment to head north. Saskatoon. Uh, Sure, bring them up as a flank security unit. Uh, we bring up the 82nd uh, uh, Reconnaissance Battle Group of 2nd Armored Division. Bring them up as a reserve element in the Anna region. Bring up the 7th Infantry Regiment back onto the road so they can be transferred. Bring up the Canadian Artillery as central support for the Anna Offensive. Okay, let's get the bombing in here. Okay, finally some air support for the guys that are at the Forte. And let's get some recon up. So, one last thing we can do to look dangerously is what's on our site. Okay, we can see Catania. Catania is actually currently empty. Um, there's a German fortress battalion to its south, supported by a pair of Italian AA units. Um, but Catania itself is, in fact, empty. So we're going to uh, we're going to be ridiculously high risk here, um, and we're going to stage a mass commando assault on Catania, supported by U.S. Rangers. And I would never do this against a human player because a human player would. Uh, probably murder you, but we're going to see if we can pull this off against an AI, we're going to try to get the, the rangers literally into Catania while the armor moves up from the west, and see if we can actually create a second envelopment of the forces uh, on the southern shoulder of the Catania front. So, uh, wish them wish them luck. Okay, they're engaged on the beaches, still haven't taken it. Okay, we got the beach, fighting Catania. Uh, elsewhere, we've taken Can uh, we've not taken Enna, but we have forced them back on its shoulders, so... We'll uh, continue our advance next turn. 
big problem we're fighting in central central Sicily around the Anna region and pretty much everywhere else in the interior is the terrain is so rugged um, that what would be a normal like one impulse delay from fighting an open terrain against lightly armed opponents becomes a two or three impulse delay because you're not just dealing with the fight the combat you're dealing with the terrain and the combat modifiers and it gets to be quite a mess so um, we're making progress but obviously we could be moving a hell of a lot faster but we'll see what uh, what the next turn brings us Okay, so here we're on turn 10. Um, so plan is to play to the end of this turn. I did I did say earlier that I wanted to take Catania by turn 10. I don't think didn't think that was realistic. It may still be a long shot, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot. So um, let's see how we're doing. Let's start with with the eastern shoulder. Uh, heavily engaged along the, along that that line of contact. But we have broken that flank, and the Canadian Army Tank Brigade is in a position to threaten Catania's western shoulder. So let's bring up the 15th Infantry Brigade, use them to try to bludgeon our way through this, uh, this flank security. Um, hit these guys as well. I want to keep, at this point, I want to keep pressure on the Axis forces uh, who are in contact uh, to make it easier for the, uh, the Allied units, the commandos uh, at Catania, to actually take the city without being murdered by retreating Panzer Grenadiers or whatever. So that means uh, lots of attacks across the front, even if they're not necessarily great odds. But we're going to uh, just keep that pressure on. So have the basically every available howitzer we have, give it its all. You guys too. Okay. Move these 25 pounders up. So first army Canadian Army Tank Brigade moves into contacts as the recon's are gonna try to make it to Adrano, but I doubt they'll actually get there. Um, how's this fighting going? Pretty inconclusive. So let's hit them with a march attack. Uh, let's bring up this battle group we formed earlier. Bring them into contact, continue to bring our pressure from the south. Um, these forces who stopped us coming out of Caltadrone, we are starting to completely overpower them. They're running out of supplies and running out of cohesion, so they should fall this turn. Okay, and as for securing Anna, so they've actually brought, okay, this is actually the defense group for Catania. They've got it up fighting in the Anna region, so continue to push towards Anna, although its capture is far less important at this point because we're, we're now in a position to actually threaten Catania and, and bring pressure elsewhere. So just at this point, focus on destroying Axis forces and breaking through those paratroopers. Um, continue moving up there. Artillery comes up. Okay, uh, recon element is going to execute a skirmish order forward towards Agira. Uh, 39th Regiment occupies Santa, Santa Catarina. That is a lot of force piled up there. Okay, I'm going to bomb that and drag it. And then we're going to hit it. And Kiyad fell. That's really not surprising. Um, 60th Regiment continues to move. We'll give them reserve orders so they can support other combats as they move by, but they're not going to get engaged themselves. Um, continue the attack here. You know what? Let's let's hit Agrigento just you know, to see if we can take it. Okay. Let's see. So artillery is fire supporting. Okay, I think everything over here is set. Have them support Santa Catarina fighting. This battle group, yeah, move up. Actually, let's have them move up and secure the outfield if they can. Uh, 45th Division HQ, let's break off their recon company and have them make the airfield dash as well. Uh, our paratroopers still have another two turns of supply. It says one of three, but, but you'll notice that when it gets to zero out of three if it's there's that just means they have um they have supply to the end of that turn just not beyond it so so there's actually still two turns of supply left in that unit um all right herman goring still stubbornly refuses to die let's uh relieve them of that Continue to bring units who are now no longer engaged up to uh, support and fill in behind the advancing forces. Okay, 
Please have your blended yeomanry. Make the Enna run, please. Saskatoon can come up behind them. Okay, air support for literally everyone. Storming the beach actually went pretty well. We have the, uh, you know, we had pretty overwhelming numbers. We dropped three full, three full commando battalions and a ranger battalion on them. So they, they really didn't have the firepower to withstand that. Uh, let's get the recon in. Although this is the last turn, so the recon is pretty irrelevant. But whatever. Um, last airstrikes. Hit Herman Goring because please die. I want them to be dead before the game ends. Um, and hit this artillery. And let's see, so kicking over the last turn, this is, so this scenario is currently set on only a 15 turn setting. Um, in action, once this action gets released, the only, there will only be two um, length options for Operation Husky. There'll be the historical, about, I think it's 45 turn scenario, and then there'll be a 30 turn option. So this is significantly shorter than the actual scenario you guys play will be. But uh, again, this is just you know, to show off the scenario. Um, so I think, Certainly more force I could order around, but there's really no point considering this is the last the end of the end, or end of the end of the recording rather. Um, I guess bring the 231st up just because. And let's uh, let's throw them in. So see how turn 10 goes. So still have a secure Catania, uh, although we are through on its flank. Yeah, okay. Catania is secured. So Catania falls, Agrigento falls. Surprisingly, Enna did not fall. So let's uh, Let's take one last stock of the situation, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll sign it off. Okay, here we are. So, just beginning of turn 11. Obviously, you know, I'm gonna gonna hang it up for now. But uh, you know, the the objectives we set out to achieve in these 10 turns have actually surprisingly all been achieved. Uh, Catania has fallen. We have control of the vast majority of the airfields in that that airfield region. Um, I mean, we didn't take Enna, but we did cut the Axis ground line of communication. So we're actually, in a, if we were to play this one through to completion to say like a, a 30 turn game, uh, I am absolutely confident that the Allies would win this. Um, if we look at the, the intelligence, the losses are currently 691 strength points Allied loss versus 4,765 Axis. The thing to keep in mind is that sounds really impressive on paper. But the overwhelming majority of those Axis casualties are like coastal militia units who are, you know, they're 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 coast watchers basically. They're they're just there to watch beaches. They're not that valuable. Uh, I would like to point out uh, honorable mention to the Herman Gorg Panzer Regiment, who are still alive and refuse to die. Um, they are a really tough unit. You know, credit to them, and it it shows. They're they're the last Axis unit in southeastern Sicily. And I think it's been three or four turns I've been saying they'll die next turn, and they just refuse to do it. So credit to them, credit where it's due. Um, but you know, overall, uh, I think this went really well for the Allied forces. Uh, I think if we were to play this thing through even another two turns, um, the vast majority of Axis force in this pocket would be crushed. It would take probably three or four turns to destroy them in total. Um, but... Uh, there's, let's see, it's 382nd Panzer Grenadier Regiment stuck in there, the 15th stuck. 129th uh, Panzer Battalion, which is actually Sturm and Shutina stuck. And they don't really have a good way out because they have to break out across the river and then they have to break out through Canadian armor. So unless there's like elements of 16th to 26th Panzer coming down this road, I can't see. Um, I think we'd, we'd bag those units because any relief force would have to get through the city of Catania, which is going to have commandos in it. There's Canadian armor engaged there. Uh, there's so much Allied force streaming northwards now, which has been freed up from the fighting in southeastern Sicily. Uh, that my guess is Adrano will probably fall in two turns, one to two turns. Um, and once that falls, there's really no hope for the Axis units stuck in the south. There'll be so much Allied force in the north that they can't do it. Um, if you were, a, if I were the Axis player, if I were actually the defender and I was in the situation, uh, first of all, they're probably done. But what I would do is I would try to create a fortress line around Mount Etna and just try to to slow down the Allied advance as much as I can. Um, the western shoulder obviously is going a lot better for the Axis. They don't have a lot of force over here, but 
Um, at one level, neither do I. I have about two infantry divisions here, but but one of them's heading towards one of them's heading north. Only one's engaged on the actual western shoulder. But overall, went really well for, for the allies. Uh, although credit to the AI defender, it it actually did reasonably well, all things considered, considering it got so much force dropped on it. Um, what we intend to do, scheduling couldn't allow it, but what we intend to do is to stage a head-to-head -head, um, game either on Operation Husky or on Operation Brimstone or Operation Firebrand. Just keep in mind, this isn't the only scenario coming in the OP Husky release. So, uh, if you guys would like to see any of the other new scenarios or you'd like to see a head-to-head -head on scenarios, you know, please let us know which ones you want to see. Um, as always, we'll be on forum to, to talk about uh, both, both this uh, gameplay video, but also there's going to be the patch notes for update 1.0.2.7, I believe it is, um, coming out probably in the next two weeks. The patch notes will be out very shortly. The patch itself will follow uh, not long after. And that update is going to bring the Battle of Tobruk uh, as the first playable historical battle in the live version of the game. It's going to bring fairly major changes to the air system, and it's going to bring changes to counter battery because counter battery right now is undertuned in chaos. So we're going to be working on that. So there's a lot of big news coming up, um, and uh, before June is out, I'm quite confident you guys will be able to play um, the the new Tobruk scenario. Uh, that update will also be bringing uh, playable historical orders of battle for opera for obviously for the Battle of Gazala in 1942. Uh, but also for Operation Crusader um, in in fall of 1941. So there's some new con a lot of new content coming up for you guys, which will be coming before Operation Husky release. Uh, as as I think I've, I've stated a few times in passing the conversations with community members on Discord, uh, Operation Husky is taking considerably longer than than we had anticipated or we've hoped. Uh, a lot of it has to do with game balancing. A lot of it has to do with game systems. So um, you know we'll get into more details on that shortly in in the proper updates. But for now. Uh, it has been a pleasure to, to showcase the upcoming uh, scenario, the Operation Husky. I look forward to showing you guys the other new scenarios coming up as well, and I really look forward to doing a head-to-head -head game. But for now, I have been NST Xenophon, this is, this is Operation Husky, and I will see you guys on the battlefield.